what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today this is gonna be a kind of full review of MIUI 12 on this device and I have been using it from the last quarantine days and here are my thoughts about it. First let me show you which build is this. This is the MIUI 12 20.4.30 or like 30th April 2020 build over here and here it shows all the specs of the device of course and inside like all specs you can see the Android version is 10 and stuff. And if you haven't seen the video of flashing this ROM, you can click on the card right here and you can flash this ROM on your Redmi K20 Pro. I would say this is not perfect at all and not a daily driver at all. The first bug that I have noticed, let's assume I am playing a video just like this over here and I tap the volume button once and if I scroll this volume like thing down, this volume panel, what is up, guys? doesn't this work. As you can see, it doesn't lower the volume at all. I have to press the volume down again and then it will lower the volume. This is a really like weird problem that I have been facing. But yes, on this volume panel, it has the like, if, even if I do anything over here, like scroll it up or scroll it down, the volume does not increase or decrease. I have to use the volume buttons to actually decrease or increase the volume. So yeah, that's a bug. Now let's talk about the dark mode and here, with the dark mode, in my opinion, yes, everything does look really, really cool. The settings panel and stuff does look cool, but there are some problems. Like even Xiaomi's Mi Store app looks weird. If I go to the categories, as you can see, all the products has some kind of square white kind of like boxy look over here. As you can see, even this is not optimized for this dark mode. And yes, it works like on most apps, but sometimes the dark mode changes colors in a particular app. And that looks kind of weird but yeah overall the dark mode looks good the next bug that i have faced is in google pay and here let me show you if i go to the apps info and if i go to the permissions i had to enable manually a lot of permissions otherwise it was just showing that it cannot even detect that i have a sim card like i could not even set up my account as you can see from the screenshot it was just saying that i don't have a sim card in it or i have to insert a sim card over here to set up google pay and one more bug that i have faced like i cannot do a payment like a real payment i cannot do it because it keeps saying that i have like some draw over the apps enabled or some other apps is drawing over the like things so that's really weird i could not make a payment even if i had the google pay set it up correctly but still this is not a daily driver at all just because of this because banking apps won't be simply working if there are some kind of security bugs and even in whatsapp i have faced some problems that if i go to the permission let me show you as you can see i have this access phone app and modify and delete contacts then read your contacts enabled manually and i have them always allowed but like if you don't allow them if you open your whatsapp and like if you have set it up your whatsapp and open it all the contacts you have will show up in numbers so that's a weird bug i have to go to the like message section and refresh the contact list every time i open whatsapp that one bug that i have seen now talking about battery and performance here if i go to the battery usage this is how it looks like this looks really really cool i would say these kind of animations over here and it also shows this kind of like how much milliampers it has consumed so that's really good but it's not quite accurate now from here as you can see from this like battery life stats i have got about eight hours of screen on time but this like milliampere consumption is just not correct because the redmi k20 pro has only 4000 milliampere battery i guess like it has consumed 6000 plus how can it be possible i don't even know the 18 watt fast charging works super fine here all the animations everywhere does look really really cool and if you're noticing on the like bottom it has the ios kind of like pill bar over here and this looks really cool like anywhere you go you can see the animations looks really cool and all the animations are not that choppy here like it was on the redmi note 7 pro and stuff of course it has a flagship 855 cpu i'm not experiencing very much choppiness here but yes i would say there are a little bit of like glitchiness here and there in the animations like a very minor glitches and this ui is filled with chinese all over like everywhere you go like even if i swipe to the left i see all everything in chinese and wherever i go and if you accidentally open any apps like let's assume music and stuff and as you can see it has like chinese everywhere so yep Everywhere you open, like if you open any system apps, you will see a lot of Chinese things. This is like really weird with this China beta that even if I have the language selected as English, 
most of the things in the UI shows as Chinese, but the settings and stuff are fine. But if you go into any kind of system apps, you will see Chinese. So be careful about that. Now let me show you the always on display. Well, I have the wallpaper set and I'll do a video about it. How you can get this MIUI 12 live wallpapers on any device. So stay tuned for that. And here we have the styles option. And as you can see, it has a lot of like clocks and stuff. Let me show you. As you can see, even here we have some Chinese things. But let me scroll down. We have this kind of kaleidoscope and then digital kind of look over here then select background over here it says and again Chinese things again and we have some more kind of always on display clocks and there are plenty of always on display clocks but yes even here you have everything in Chinese almost and you can of course add from like here and you can add any photo over here on the always on display so that's cool thing. Now let's talk a bit about the fingerprint scanner and like face unlock. The fingerprint scanner speed is pretty fine, not bad at all, but these animations are very less like the animation which happens on the fingerprint scanner area like this. You have only four like animations which we used to get with the MIUI 11. So yeah, I will expect like more animations of the fingerprint scanner area, but this live wallpaper and stuff looks really, really awesome in my opinion. And let me show you from, with the left thumb unlocking from always on display as you can see it's pretty good not bad at all and let me show you now the face unlock for the face unlock i have set it yes and you can double tap and then from the lock screen itself you can swipe up and it will unlock the device just like this so the face unlock speed is not bad at all but yes with unlocking the device i would say the fingerprint scanner and face unlock both is very much reliable over here I had no like major issues at all with the unlocking things. Now let me show you the camera app again and I feel the camera app has been like polished a little bit more and a lot more customizable right now. And then we have these kind of stickers over here. Let me switch the front camera and as you can see these are working fine not a problem and seems like it's pretty optimized no issues. But let me go into the camera settings and this is how the camera settings looks like. We have most of the things in MIUI 11 but here we have um, like one more option which says customize and if you go over here you can go to the colors and from here you can change the UI color like the selected thing is yellow so you can change it to this kind of color or this violet kind of color and then sky blue or something or greenish blue kind of over here. You have a lot of colors to choose from and you can like use any kind of themes over here just for the camera. And that I feel is really good and you can have a sound for your prop up camera of course and then we have the layout kind of thing and you can customize these buttons I guess as you can see you have a lot of things to customize over here you can add the vlog mode and stuff if you want to I guess so this is really cool that we can add anything over here on the start screen just like the quick settings panel as it used to so this is really great we can also add slow motion over here that's cool all right so we have everything right here so night mode will be appearing here and slow motion and stuff will be here so that's really cool you have like bunch of things over here to customize and it will be added in these menus so this is really cool in my opinion that you can add these options or you can remove them if you want to and of course i have shown it already the 4k 60 fps and stuff is still there so you don't need to worry about like shooting 4k 60 fps videos over here and there is also an option like which says subtitles and let's agree on that now if i switch to the video mode so yeah it's recording the video and it shows something over here you can dictate subtitles now okay so i can like say anything now and it will be added to the video in the subtitles so this is really a cool feature maybe like if you are a vlogger or something and you need the subtitles this is gonna be a really cool feature for you and talking about the gcam 7 yes i have tried the gcam 7 like version 1.6 by yonix that is simply not working yes it takes the picture but i cannot view it over there it just like closes kind of so the gcam is not perfect or you can say it's not working here and as of right now and the youtube app does this kind of rotation kind of thing looks really cool let me show you again looks better in the dark theme i would say but i'm currently using the white theme so yes this kind of rotation looks cool now talking about the floating window yes it does work from anywhere like you can do this you can release to add over here if you're noticing you have to drop it in this box and if you drop it as you can see 
I have seen one bug with this floating window. If I have a video playing in YouTube, it just goes black screen. If you are noticing, I have to tap on it once, then tap on it again, pause it and then play it back again and then hold it and put it to the corner and then the video like keeps playing. So this is really cool feature in my opinion and you can like do anything else over here right now. I can just open Twitter and browse it just like this. This floating window is gonna be a really cool thing. Of course, this is for not only YouTube, this is for anything else. Like you don't even need to have YouTube premium to play a music or something to like play it over here and you can do anything else over here. So that's really cool in my opinion that you can use it over like any kind of app or with any app for that matter. And to close it, you have to just like swipe it up from the bottom and it closes the app. And as this is a Chinese ROM, I would say the DRM Info of course has become L3 or level 3. So you cannot like stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. So that's really a bummer for like Indian or global users. But I would say this is like not an issue because this is of course a closed China beta ROM. So once the global version comes or I think even on the U version it could be level 1, I don't know. We should wait for the level 1 on the global beta builds. Okay, so inside developer options, we have this monitor kind of settings and here if you go into this power monitor, we have this frame rate monitor tools and you can start it anytime. And what it does, it shows the FPS over here on the top left, it shows the resolution, then it shows the display refresh rate, then it shows the FPS that I'm getting in a game. So this is really cool. As you can see, it's like giving me 60 FPS as of right now. So the gaming performance I'm getting about like constant 60 FPS on Call of Duty. So now let's try PUBG. The gaming performance should be pretty good over here as I'm getting constant 60 FPS if you are noticing on the top left over here 59 right now. So yep it keeps like going above 50 it like keeps the FPS above 50 pretty much. So not a problem I would say in gaming but let's drop somewhere. And here is the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM. Now let's open some apps from memory over here. And as you can see, all the apps are in memory. And here is the app opening up speeds and the animations of the like app opening up. So in my opinion, yes, this feels a little bit choppy when you compare it to the MIUI 11, I guess. But yeah, this is a closed beta ROM and it's only gonna be better in future updates. So yep, I don't have a problem with that. And app switching and stuff right now is fine but sometimes I have seen like while switching between apps just like this it was a little choppy or it was weird that it was like showing the black screen and it doesn't go to the next app from here I have seen that but right now that is not simply happening and one more thing you gotta get used to if you swipe from the right like this you get the control center if you swipe from the left like this you get the notification panel and there should have been an option like from the notification panel itself you can go to the settings but that's not simply there to get to the like settings you have to go to the control center and click over here so the conclusion of using MIUI 12 on the Redmi K20 Pro I would say Yes, if you love MIUI, you will definitely love the animations over here, the unlocking animation and stuff, the unlocking speed is reliable and everything else feels just right at home with MIUI with a little bit of tweaks, futuristic kind of animations over here and all the quick control center and stuff like iOS looks pretty cool and I have changed this to like unknown data plan over here like just to show if I like how much data I have used but it doesn't let me choose that over here. And of course, the quick settings panel, you, you just need to get used to it. You can disable it, yes, 
but right now i have been using it like with the control center and i had zero problems with it the control center works fine so if i have this like landscape mode over here and right now as you can see the control center in landscape mode does not use the space in my opinion and this need need to be optimized in future i guess it just uses this part of the screen it does not use like this much part of the screens pretty poor use of space over here in my opinion and these animations looks cool to like switch between wi-fi and stuff and the sound output via the bluetooth and headphone over here i would say like 3.5 headphone jack and bluetooth as well is really really good and the call quality over here i have been like getting really good over here not a problem with the call quality that i have like got over here and it has a lot of headphones over here in the mi audio dirac and this mi sound enhancer or hd or hi-fi audio does work super fine with a lot of presets as you can see and i have been using it with the youth edition and the youth edition sounds the best over here with the like headphone jack and the mid wheel driver headphone i have works best with this youth edition but there are a lot of problems like you cannot really set the google account correctly you cannot restore the google app data backup over here so those kind of problems are there and this was the full review of the miui 12 up to 2nd may 2020 and definitely i'm gonna switch to evolution x right now and catch you guys in the next video until next time hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you have enjoyed this video this is Sito signing off from KTN Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one.